Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to take a very quick look at the card game Noir. This game is for two to four players, ages 10 and up, and the average play time is between 15 and 45 minutes. In this game, players will be using a combination of deduction, logic, and a little bit of deception in order to come out on top. Let's just take a quick moment to look at the components and see how it's played. As far as the components are concerned, you've got two decks of cards. One is the suspect deck, while the other is the evidence deck. In the suspect deck, one side simply lists the name and the picture of a character, while the other side of the card lists the deceased side. As far as the evidence deck goes, um, you've got one side uh, blank, while the other side lists the innocent side. The characters listed in this particular deck, in the uh, evidence deck, is the same as the characters featured in the suspect deck. Now before I go any further, it's worth pointing out there are four different ways to play this game. There are four different variants listed via these reference cards here. And uh, they each have a different play time as well as a minimum play requirement. Uh, one game, for example, uh, is for two players and takes about 15 minutes to play, while another game is designed for three to four players and takes about 45 minutes to play. The game that I'll be featuring in this particular video is the Killer versus the Inspector. That is a two-player game that takes about 15 minutes to play, and it's probably the easiest of the four. Now, as far as setting up the game for the Killer vs. Inspector variant, the Suspect deck is shuffled up and dealt out in a 5x5 five five grid like so, with the deceased side face down. After that, the Evidence deck is shuffled, and placed face down next to the grid like so, and uh, this will serve as the draw deck of sorts. After that, players will need to decide who will be the killer and who will be the inspector. The killer will go ahead and take a card from the evidence deck, and this will be their starting secret identity. The inspector will go ahead and draw him or herself four cards. After that, the killer will make the first move. Now the first turn for both players is uh, played out a bit differently. For the killer's first turn, what they'll go ahead and do is take a look at their secret identity. In this case, it's Simon, and I believe Simon is here. What the killer will do is go ahead and kill someone off that is adjacent to them, either uh, vertically, horizontal, or vertically, horizontally, or diagonally. And let's just say that the killer goes ahead and picks this one to kill off. And what will happen at this point, you'll just simply flip that card over to the deceased side. Now the uh, inspector has some idea as to who the killer is. It would have to be someone that is adjacent to uh, this Udstad who was killed. Now after that, the inspector will make their move. They'll go ahead and take a look at their deck of cards, pick one of them, and place it face down as their secret identity. Obviously, they couldn't pick this Udstad character because he's dead. But, um, let's say that uh, this person wanted to be Quentin. So he'll place that face down as his secret identity for the game. After both players are done taking their very first turn, they'll go ahead and alternate between each other, performing one action per turn. The killer has three different abilities, but like I said, uh, the killer could only make use of one of them on their turn. They can kill someone off, just like on the very first turn of the game. They can pick someone that is adjacent to their hidden identity and just flip them over to the deceased side. The second ability that the, uh, the killer has is that they can uh, disguise themselves. And basically what that entails, they'll draw a card from this evidence deck. And they'll assume the new identity of the person if they happen to be alive. In this case, uh, Horatio should still be alive. He's over here. So what will happen is this card will be discarded. Simon, and Simon will then be flipped over to the deceased side, and the killer will now assume the role of Horatio. The third action that the killer could have performed is shifting rows, uh, and all that involves is you could take a column or a row and shift it to the side. So let's say that the killer wanted to move the top row over to the right. So all that will entail is all of these cards will shift over like so, 
and the card that falls off as a result is simply brought over to the other side. If you wanted to shift the column, it's the same thing. Um, you could shift up like that, move these cards up, and the card that fell off the top will just simply be brought down like so. Like the killer, the inspector has three different abilities at their disposal, though they can only choose one of those abilities on their turn. The first ability that the inspector can make use of is the arrest action, and that is very similar to the kill action. They'll just simply find themselves on the grid, in secret of course, and attempt to arrest someone that is adjacent to them. If they pick a card that matches the identity of the killer, the killer has to reveal himself and the inspector wins the game. If they pick the wrong person and they arrested the wrong person, nothing happens. The second action is the exonerate action. They simply draw a card from the evidence deck and they'll pick a card from their hand to declare as innocent. Let's say that the inspector wanted to uh, choose Wilhelm and exonerate him. All that entails is placing the innocent card over top of the character card like so, just so the inspector can keep track of who's innocent and who is still a suspect. Finally, the inspector can shift cards around in the same manner as the killer did. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, players will continue taking turns until one of three things happen. When there are 16 deceased characters on the grid, then uh, that automatically uh, causes the killer to win. If the killer happens to perform a kill action and kills off a character that is the hidden identity of the uh, inspector, then the killer again wins. If the inspector happens to arrest the right person or the person matching the killer's hidden identity, then the inspector wins. And there you have it. Nothing fancy, but it should give you a general feel as far as how the game is played. Keep in mind, like I said, there are four different variants in the game, and I only covered one of them. You can check out my review at www.dadsgamingaddiction.com or you can simply click on the link in the below description and it'll take you there as well. This is Vince, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.